Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of AccuStats Video Productions, it's our great pleasure to welcome you once again here to the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. We're at the home of AccuStats, the Aramis Simonis Arena at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey. And we have assembled once again six of the best champions in the world to come and compete in the Make It Happen round robin format. The first four days of our double event, we're playing eight ball, races to 10 games, and the winner of each match receives $1,000. Once the round robin play has been concluded tomorrow after the 7 p.m. match, the players with the two best overall records will then come back at 9.30 tomorrow night and compete in the championship match for the title and an additional $1,000. So please be with us for that. And it's going to get pretty exciting as we get underway with this evening's program. It's starting to tighten up quite a bit. We'd like to take one more opportunity to say thanks to our three great sponsors that have provided us with the best equipment in the industry. Diamond Billiard Products with this beautiful Pro-Am table, Simonis with our Tour Blue 860, and Aramith for providing us with the best pool balls on the planet. Thank you all to those companies for their support. We also want to make sure that we keep telling you how much you all mean to us and how we couldn't do this without your support as well. Thanks to all of you watching out there and thanks to all of you who have come here to watch this live in person. For the 11th time, ladies and gentlemen, you have made it happen. Okay, thank you very much. We're about to begin this evening's session. We have two matches for you. We'll start right now. This is match number 11. Our first player is from Bislig Surigao del Sur in the Republic of the Philippines. Among this gentleman's accomplishments include two Derby City nine ball titles. He's also a former world nine ball champion. He's sponsored by Meucci and Bugsy Promotions. We know him as Robocop. It's Dennis Orcuyo. Thank you. His opponent's from Glasgow, Scotland. He, this gentleman is a two-time Derby City Bigfoot 10-ball champion. That is one tough event to win. He's done it twice in a row. And as the whole pool world knows, and I'm going to remind you just in case, he is now the reigning US Open 9-ball champion. He's sponsored by Miyuchi and DigiQ by OB. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Eagle Eye, Jason Shaw. Okay, here we go. Your referee in charge of this match is Mr. Carswell Ransom. Your official timekeeper is Miss Julie Ha. And it's now my pleasure to send it to the booth to U.S. Open champion and our host, Double J, Jeremy Jones. And thank you, Kenny, and welcome again, everyone, to the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. We're here in Edison, New Jersey. I'm Jeremy Jones with AccuStat Video Productions. I'll shortly be joined by Kenny Schumann in the booth. And uh, we got uh, just another great match. Uh, just it doesn't get any better than this, ladies and gentlemen, with Jason Shaw and Dennis Roculio. The, uh, the situation at hand is Jason needs a win to, to really stay in the running to try and get in that final. Uh, Dennis, uh, a win would put him in, a, in a, what really is uh, where he controls his own, his own destiny at two and one record. If he can get to three and one and win the next match four and one, he would almost certainly be uh, securing a, a spot in our final tomorrow night at 9.30. And yeah, four and one is definitely a guarantee and we have a few players trying to reach that goal. Uh, now joined by Kenny Schumann. How you doing, Kenny? All right, Double J, I'm doing good. I'm excited about what's gonna happen here and I'm really excited also for the next match. And we'll talk about that in just a bit too because the upcoming match after this is uh, gonna have a lot of bearing on what's gonna happen, but what you just alluded to is also important. Uh, two losses, you might have a little bit of a chance, but uh, like you said, Jason, if he doesn't win here, he's just playing for a 1,000 next time. Well, yeah, and he's playing for a lot of pride. These guys, they play each other all the time, so when, it, when, the, when it's all said and done, some decades from now, these guys can say, yeah, I got you just one more time than you got me, and yep. that, that does mean something to these guys. Um, we are playing uh, professional eight ball with the rules, uh, take what you make, meaning if you make two, st two stripes and one solid, uh, any you make the mo most of, that's the balls you have. Uh, so in that case, you would have take solids. Uh, we're playing with a 45 second shot clock. Uh, 
It's a race to 10, alternate the break. The eight does count on the break. These players will be allowed a 90 second cushion after after the break or until uh, or until the groups are established, exactly. whichever happens first. That's right. So right now, Dennis has 90 seconds to observe the layout since uh, Jason broke dry and uh, Dennis would still have an extension even after that were he to need it. Now, once he makes a ball here, uh, then we'll go to 45 seconds and one extension each game. If for some reason Dennis were to miss here and the table is still open, then the 90 seconds continues still until the applies. groups are established. Exactly, and I'll tell you, you don't. You, we haven't. I haven't seen many dry breaks by Jason, and and certainly not today. Uh, but now, a real tester coming off the end rail for Dennis on this 10 ball. Jeremy, why do you think the most most players, not maybe not necessarily the elite of the elite, but most eight ball players, when they break, isn't it uncanny how often that cue ball winds up on that end rail? What yeah. do, you, do you have any theory on why that happens? Um, well, just my best guess might be they don't change their break a whole lot from 10 ball and 9 ball. Like a lot of times, like they're breaking out in the center. So you're basically using the same 10 ball, uh, same as the 10 ball break. I'm not sure if the extra five balls uh, put a little more energy on the cue ball to make it go back. Uh, and you'll find there's a lot of kisses involved in eight ball that send the cue ball back to the end rail. A lot more, you know, you have more variables by just adding those extra balls. So, and, and not only that, we're playing under perfect conditions. The rack's nice, the balls are cleaned. Uh, there's not much humidity in the room, so you get a little more flyback with the cue ball just from that off the rack, and which has a tendency to send the cue ball to the end rail. Well, thanks, man. I mean, that was really a, a very insightful explanation, and, and uh, even not, some things that, yeah. that I wasn't even aware of to, to think about, too, is the, the, the fact that they're not changing from the eight ball or the nine ball break and the added mass of the pack. Right, right. It's just the resistance coming off the pack sends the cue ball back a little more. It's almost like some of the trick shots when you line two or three up frozen together. And you put the you put the ball, the ball draws easier. You know, you draw like five rails around the table. So really a nice shot, opening shot coming off the end rail like we talked about on that 10 ball. Yeah, that was about a 15 footer <laughs> diagonal the whole table. Boy, but, and, uh, and the first shot of the match. So, yeah. you know, that's just even more impressive. And an opportunity to kind of steal the game here because Jason broke. And we've already seen even with an alternate break format how really critical it is to hold serve. Yeah, that and uh, I think, you know, we've seen some mistakes here this week, but for the most part, the mistakes have fallen early in the matches. So I think any opponent or any player that gets off to a, a big start, a good start, it seems like to me all the guys settle in and play really great pool from about for about 80, the latter 80% of the match. So any player that starts off knocking a 10 ball in like that and then continuing to get out on your opponent's break, it's just going to be a huge advantage here for Dennis. Well, he's about dead straight on this 14 there, Jeremy. Uh, can he, can he yeah, screw he, it to the left just sure a little can. bit? He sure can. He sure can. That's one okay. thing Dennis does. He exhibited it yesterday. He had multiple shots where he had to use a certain part of the pocket. So he's very aware of uh, being able to use the entire pocket to be able to move the cue ball. Now he's going to have to manufacture. He's going to cheat this and go a couple rails around the table in between the four two. two. Yeah. I think anyway, he could hold he, the ball. He could stay there and just take the long eight. I really think it's sitting okay to go around here. Yeah, though. and even if he, he if he comes a little uh, long, that's fine. You want to be long rather than short here anyway. Doesn't want to catch the seven, though. And this is going to be short. You There's betcha. no reason to be he, short why, there. Why did he go in so deep into that pot corner? And that was okay. I think it would have lengthened out with a little more speed. A little more speed. It's just a just a really an under hit uh, overall. Well, and he's going to have to look at a one rail cut, a one rail kick cut on the eight. I think. Well, you can jump it, but you've got to use your playing cue if he wants to jump the seven to okay. try to make the eight. Okay. Now this <clears throat> is the type of shot. If you're his opponent. You know if he just hits the eight, he's got a good chance of making it. Just the angle he's coming in on, he could catch it thin, but most likely if he hits it, I like him. I like to bet he makes it if he catches any piece of it. Even though it's a good, oh, he went way too long, way too long. 
Well, let's quickly explain to everybody and, and clarify the fact that uh, the fact that he fouled on the eight is not a loss of game. Um, it's uh, it's simply a ball in hand. Yeah, and that's the uh, early mistake I was talking about. Uh, it seems to me, just like the last match, both Corey and Shane, they both had some mistakes early, but then from 4-4, I think we saw 11 breaking runs in a row. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think it's going to, you know, you always want to get the lead. But all these guys know that when you're playing a match, you don't panic too much uh, when you fall behind because somebody's probably going to get a 3-1 lead or a 4-2 lead. You know, it's good. that's usually how it's going to go. But you definitely want the lead here, it seems like to me, because all the players really settle in and start playing just an incredible pool. Well, Jason's got to feel like Christmas came early to get back to the table after Dennis opened with that long 10 ball and then was just going through the rack beautifully. He played the pattern that you suggested from the last ball to the eight, and he just didn't spin that cue ball enough. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of moving the cue ball when when not necessary, and he could have taken a long shot on the eight, holding the thir holding the 12 or 13 up. I can't recall which one it was, but, but I liked him moving the cue ball there. He was real close to the object ball. I'm not really sure what he was worried about on the overhit. Yeah. There wasn't really much of a problem on overhitting the ball. The underhit was definitely the area you wanted to stay away from. You mentioned, excuse me, that Dennis is certainly adept at cheating the pocket on a straight in shot. So let me ask you this, when you do that, are you gonna try to play a shot like that with cheating the pocket and as little English as possible, because that's going to have some effect on it as well? Or does it depend on the lay and where you got to go and position and all those other yeah, things? Yeah, well, all those factors mean something. Now, if you just have to make the ball and you're cheating the pocket, or if you're shooting to a portion of the pocket, meaning there's a ball in the way, that's what he did yesterday. He, he, he did so well. as he There was a little bit of a ball in the way. He had to hit it to the upper half for the most part. But if you're tr talking about position play involved as well, well, that usually involves English. So there's a, there's just a trust factor. You can't really mathematically look at it the way you're hitting it a little different. You just have to trust it. It just comes from uh, hours and hours, days and days, months and months of hitting a lot of balls. You know, it's just like, you know, when you tell somebody, what do you aim at? Well, it's kind of hard to tell somebody, what do you aim at on the ball? You can give them a general area, but there's... There's just a trust factor of what you're shooting, you know, lefting us, topping us hard, soft, you know. Uh, it's just a matter of that that really uh, puts you down on the ball. It's really hard to uh, describe, uh, you know, the aiming part of the game. And there are so many different methods and approaches to aiming. Or uh, theories, anyway. Or theories, yeah. <laughs> I think the great players, uh, you know, as much as they might tell you they use a little something, I don't see much gauge factor when it comes to the great players, I'll it's, tell you that. It's, as you said, it's all those years, and it's feel, and it's muscle memory, and it's knowing what's going to happen. Well, yeah, uh, just... Dennis, uh, excuse me, uh, Dennis returned a dry break here to Jason, so he's got a, he's got an open table here. Yeah, and, and both uh, these, let's, uh... let's take a look. Well, let me ask you this now, too, then, Jeremy. Uh, the table has just been opened broken um what's the first thing you start to look at do you look for clusters do you look where the eight is go ahead well, tell us what, what's the good approach for the most part clusters um and and if both have clusters i try to look for all right if there's a solid the two stripes locked up over here or if there's a solid and a stripe locked over here but i really want stripes that's beca usually because there's another stripe there to help me nearby and the problem is with clusters whenever you get a cluster out by its by itself and then that becomes a big issue because uh, Danny talked about many times and all of us know, not all of us, but a lot of us that played a lot of eight ball, you want something that gives you a little insurance when you have to break balls open, you know, and, and the other thing that I really look at is which, which set of balls really offers to where I don't have to move the cue ball that much. I can play one half of the table, eliminate that, and then come down and play the other half. The ones that are really tough is, is when you have a ball pinned, it doesn't even have to be uh, trapped, like, a, you know, locked up to another ball, but just kind of pinned by itself. Not accessible. 
Well, not accessible or tough accessible, maybe it, to where it is accessible, but you know, there's nothing else around it to help me get to it. So that's, you're always going to require more cue ball movement then. It's and good, I'll tell you, good advice. I'll tell you another thing that I think will get better as the match goes is the break. Uh, Dennis is, even though he's two and one, I think he's probably had more scratches on the break than anybody in this event. He had five in one match and three in another. Um, and escaped uh, and with a win on one of those, so. Wow, yeah. Do you recall if most of those were in the side pocket? Yeah, two, two, each, right in the two side. each in the sides yeah. on one of them, yeah. Yeah, and, that, and, and that's the result of a poor hit on the, on the front ball, right? Yeah, yeah, no, none of them were kissed in. They were just, uh, mm -hmm. just like last night, uh, I think he was playing Darren. Is that Yeah, the is, last match, yeah. Yeah, there were two, his two last breaks, he, <laughs> he hit inside that left side pocket mm -hmm. and then got away with it. Uh, caught a lot of the inside of the pocket and still bounced out. So now after two dry breaks, uh, yeah, Jason, Jason uh, came away victorious there. Well, I think Jason's got to feel like he almost was stealing there. I mean, the first one, he wasn't supposed to even get out of his chair after he broke dry. And then Dennis come back with his dry break of his own. One thing that I have noticed, too, and, and, and I'm sure that, um, you know, everybody that plays at a good level will, will recognize it, very few times are they running in to the other balls oh, yeah. when, when all the balls are open. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the opponent's group is in the same position it was in after the break most of the time if, if you don't have to break up a cluster or go into something. Yeah, that's what's so impressive now. A Le little easily, uh, more easily done on a big table because you have a little more real estate, but mm -hmm. still uh, the way these players get not only through their problems, but without really... Uh, like Kenny said, without really uh, repositioning many, you know, usually th this level, when they're repositioning the balls, it's totally intended. And here we have three dry three breaks in a row. Oh. In a row. And right. I'll tell you what, this is, I mean, nobody likes to dry break, but one thing I can look at this dry, these three in a row, uh, this table has offered a lot of different scenarios in just a short period of time, meaning We've had matches where a guy made a ball on the break every game. Then we've had matches where the guys, certain players were very successful for a portion of the match, and then all of a sudden dry broke a couple of times at the wrong time. So I like a table that stands up every now and again and uh, and 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 lets these guys dry break, and it plays towards the their uh, you know mental side there's, of the game. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it gets a little uh, there's a little uh, it gets you a little upset. It may. Right. Well, my first inclination here would be solids if I've got a if the two will go, and 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 you know he may do otherwise, um, but every solid has a pocket, and the eight will go up there past the six. So it'll get, it'll go in both corners. Well, right. if he takes the solids, the six will be out of the way. The seven goes in the side. Um, oh, I like the solids yeah. for sure, just simply because of the twelve. Right. If you could reposition the twelve somewhere now. May become a little different. Uh, no, I definitely like the solids. And I think he would do well to go ahead and shoot the six in and get that one, four, and two uh, on the opposite end of the table. He may not do so. He may be worried about the seven a little bit. That's why he's maybe trying to get to the three now and get to the seven. I can't blame him there. No, and he had to use outside English to help that shot too. So he really had to come down this, this side rather than stay up at the other end of the table. Uh, but it looks like... Um, well, since he's down here, he should go three, ahead and take three, care of the seven. Three, yeah. seven. Yeah. Yeah, well, five first. You don't, okay, the five's, five, three, the, the five's seven. kind yeah. of meaningless is why. The five's not helping you. You don't, at this level, the way the balls are, you don't really need an insurance ball that I'm going to get out of line on like some league players think or something like that. And there's nothing wrong with that thinking. But with these guys, he needed to just take the five away. Go ahead and get the three and seven, and then he'll end up playing long position probably on the eight in the lower left-hand corner. And that'll be a few shots from now. But And that's why he stood over the five for a minute. And he was figuring to himself, is this five really doing anything for me later in the, in the, uh, in the rack, or, or should I go ahead and get it right now? And I think he made a wise choice. He'll just float this in and go by, go by the seven right at the, uh, go by the eight right at the one. 
and actually the four will go in the same side the seven's going in if he were to come too far or he can do so after the one ball yeah he doesn't he i like kenny's call here if the nine wasn't there hey come around you got two balls to play with but with the nine being there go ahead and play the short side on the four mm -hmm. uh in the in the left side pocket by the 12. just make sure you get up a little bit and get off the rail And really uh, a picture perfect out so far in my mind. Yep. It's textbook so far. You just don't want to touch the two ball here, of course. No, he's going away from yeah. it a little bit, I think. So, yeah. yeah, perfect. Just wanting to hold his angle. He's a little straight. It's a little straight. Not bad, though. It's almost uh, you could scratch in the side shooting the eight, but you'd have to kind of go through the 12 a little bit to do so. So. Would you consider going forward a foot, foot and a half like he's looking or maybe just go forward a revolution and take your cut? No, I like shooting from above the ball, and that means this side of the ball. It's a little bit of a blind pocket when you get behind, exactly. the, behind the ball. You'll see a lot more balls miss when the when players fall behind them. And not only that, the friction on the ball is a little different. Like you get a little different hit on the eight ball sometimes. Right, you, you, you need a little helping English on those shots sometimes. Yeah, it's weird. You're just kind of pulling the ball away from the pocket, like towards the center of the table, so. Yeah, kind of like, you know, terminology for that can be a, you know, blind cut or a back cut. Right, and that's why I like, Because you, you know, don't see the pocket. Come Wednesday, we're going to start the straight pool, the 12th event here in our Make It Happen. Um, but that's why when you start playing straight pool, you have to get used to the break shot so much. You know, people play the rack perfect and they get on the break and it's a little funny going back that back cut where the cue ball goes into the rack. So it's something you need to get used to. But it's still when you have a choice playing the other games, you kind of stay away from that shot. That's why you see so many great players and so many people that know the game uh, really preach the center of the table as far as position. Um, because generally when you're in the center of the table, you're not really shooting those type of shots too often. And you don't have a lot of distance between you and a pocket. Absolutely, right. and, and really the center of the table, really uh, on most shots, the most shots that you have an angle on at least, you can get back to any part of the pool table you know, from. So that, mean, that meaning playing position on another ball. If you're just joining us, if you stepped in late, uh, I'm Jeremy Jones joined by Kenny Schumann. We're here with AccuStats Video Productions uh, at the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational in Edison, New Jersey. This is our third match of day, day three and our 11th match overall. Tennis getting on the board in the third game and now breaking. We've had three dry breaks in a row, but I'll tell you what, I'd like to bet every time that these guys make a ball on the break. Let's That's see what, what type of an adjustment he makes here. It's the same spot, so it's got to be a speed adjustment. And I wouldn't change much. No, because, I wouldn't either. Because he's been so successful yesterday. Now, day one, he struggled a couple of times with dry breaks, but he didn't dry break much. Now, again, look at this. Look at this. And 15 rattled inside. It didn't go. Wow. And the reason why he's shaking his head there is normally he'll say, ah, I did a little something different, but there he hit the ball how he wanted he hit it how he's been getting a lot of great results so far and so a little well, bewildered yeah well jason wasted no time in picking the stripes because he didn't want anything to do with the seven ball that's yeah. about the worst position on a pool table you can have an object ball and uh all yeah. the stripes have pockets anyway he's just got to figure out how he wants to take care of the 10 and then clear it clear the path for the 14 although the 14 might even go can, no. can you see uh, it's close well, yeah oh in, in the corner you mean by the 10 yeah. yeah 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 by the 10 so if it goes there's really no no issue there oh if it doesn't he needs to get the 10 out of there a little well if a little it does, early yeah and if it doesn't he can go at the at the 10 or the 14 right now I wouldn't want to move the 14, though, I don't think. I'd like yeah, to not touch either of those. Just check it with a little high. I was going to say, I don't think he'll touch anything. Yeah. Uh, he'll just play for the 10 and then the 13, and then he'll have natural angle on the 11 to come back to the 14. Right. So. 10, 10, 13, 11, 14 is Correct. the pattern. Because once you're on the 14, it's a stop shot. Or no matter what angle you have on the 14, you're going to have a shot on the 8. And I think, I think Jason would tell you himself, after two matches... It didn't look good for the Jason Shaw corner in this event. Uh, 
he, he and not saying not saying that he didn't play pretty well. He had a couple uncharacteristic mistakes, lost a couple of close matches, but starting off 0 and 2 with this cast, you kind of figure you're in trouble. But then he came with a big win earlier. And now I think he's wanting to show everybody he can still win this event after losing his first two. I think your comment earlier about pride is uh, right on the money here. Yeah, and we've seen it in all sports, you know. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't no, uh, you know, just like from Pluto win when he won the U.S. Open. It wasn't like an upset from somewhere like you see in other sports and then the, the next game they yeah. play, they'll have a lull. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like that, but it's got to be the biggest win of his career so far. I would think anybody's career, the U.S. Open. So he might have had... Uh, the first couple of days here, he just, you know, I think he's so. still in a little shock therapy from the U.S. Open, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, I think just before uh, we have the break here, I want to take a, a quick moment here and thank some of our first-time Make It Happen supporters, Jeremy, that have been so gracious in contributing to being able to put this on event on. And uh, I'd like to thank Mitchell Barry from California. And of course, our, our very close uh, friend, James Feldman from New York, who's here watching with us. And also Michael uh, Transition uh, from right here in New Jersey. So thanks to you guys for helping make this happen. We yeah, really absolutely. appreciate it. And we got a few more we'll do after a couple more games. One thing I do want to also uh, point out, next time we see Dennis come to the table to break, he has a very unusual bridge hand when he breaks. It's an elevated tripod sometimes. Not many players don't have the heel of their hand on the table. It's worked for him his whole career, but yeah. uh, it's probably worth uh, maybe taking a close look at next time he comes to the table yeah. to break. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. The funny thing is he didn't use it that time. Sometimes he'll, he will, like the last one, he put his palm on the ground. But oh. he's got the other one you're talking about where he's, where he's got yeah. the what would be it's, the middle finger and the pinky right. finger pretty much supporting everything. Uh, mm -hmm. The only other great player that I ever really saw uh, – break like that and he broke really well and uh, some of these people might not know who he is or may, may have not got to watch him play was Rudolfo Luai. Right. Luai broke the ball so incredible with that same bridge it's like he got his whole body going right through that hand so now here with the stripes he's got a lot of work here Kenny he's got a lot of work here with the 9 and 13 well, access to the 13 is, is not that big of a deal. If he can get the right angle on it to just draw back and bump the two a little bit, then my question is, could he make a good enough hit on the nine to cut it in? He could always bank it. Well, well I think that's what he's doing now is he's going to move that deuce. No. He's, is he going to try to get behind the nine and play no, it that's the same why he, That's why he left the 15 and 12 up to get back on the nine. That's why he didn't peel them other two off, because he knew he couldn't get on the nine with the 13. Oh, I see. That's okay. why you leave the others up there to, to gain position back on the nine later on. This doesn't come up that often in eight ball. A lot of times you want to take care of one group and then come back down. But that's why I initially said that it's a little funny with the nine and 13, because he couldn't get on the 13 to get on the nine. He couldn't get on the nine to get on the 13. So he's going to have to go up and down right. the table. So then this is a situation, contrary to what you said is the general rule, where you're going to have to move your cue ball more than you would like to ideally, and it's just that the balls dictate that that's how you're going to be able to take them off the best possible way. Right, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. I'm pretty impressed with uh, with Jason being able to recognize that right from the get. Now he's going to have to look at uh, whew, one, uh, bottom rails, left side rail, four and rail. rail. Four rails. Uh, I don't think he's going to catch the fourth. I think the fourth involves going the, at that four, side the, pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to he's going to go three rails right towards that seven or towards that side pocket, trying to get where he was at now. Now he could pull this with a low outside ball and kind of pull the cue ball tight and just go past the seven. And yeah, yeah, and take a little longer shot. And I'll tell you one thing about that: he won't involve hitting this one ball. He's gonna he's got a small area to go in between this. Oh, is it now is he cueing it with inside or? No, he did what you suggested. Yeah, now yeah. I like that route much right. better. Even though he's going to have a little thinner cut, he's going to definitely have the cut. That's the main thing. And he also knows that the six is helping him. He doesn't have to worry about that pocket. Right. 
And he also knows he's probably one of the greatest in the world at just getting down and making the ball. Ooh. It's going to say the cue ball almost nicked the seven. And there's a big hole right there. Paul Gast from New York, we want to say how much we appreciate you being part of the Make It Happen family and helping us put this great doubleheader event on, along with Scott Hooper from Virginia. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Now, Dennis is really going to check this rack, and I don't, he's racking his own, but I'm saying he's going to be very aware of what's going on because I think this is, uh, what is that, uh, let's, five games? So he's, he's had two, two dry breaks, is that right? Yeah, this yeah. is this is his third break. Yeah, so, so. he's, I mean, because uh, he won the lag, they played five games. Okay, you'll see like that one. You see the palms on the yeah. ground. Yeah, that's the one he's used. But last night, a couple of times, he used the one you were talking about, where right. he elevates the entire arm and gets a little bit more downward angle on the cue ball. See the speed? Everything seems perfect. The hit. He made two solids and a stripe. That's what I saw. And he's got, uh, I think. Okay, he's got to okay. be concerned about the four. That's right. the, that's the one. Well, the two will help him open it, but what the insurance mm -hmm. ball? Well, if I he think does, he's got to shoot the five the two. In the side? He's got to shoot the two to start. I think the three won't pass, huh? It won't pass in the corner. Now he could cut it in the side, and uh, I yeah, don't but think. Yeah, if, if you shoot the two now, the best you could do maybe would be to stop and use the five to open the four, but then you have no insurance. Well, I'm not sure he has to open the four. He just has to be concerned. I think it may go it in the side pocket? pocket once the five's removed. Ooh. I think that he yeah, may have a side pocket. He'd have to be on the short rail right. side of it, though. So again, if he has to play the two ball. And I don't really see the breakout on the four. If he has to open the open, uh, get to the four for the side pocket, you're going to see him have to go up and down the table. Well, I see one other thing, and he may look at it. The three in the side off the 12. Or just clean. Or clean. But yeah. you, you, the three off the 12, you can control your rock a little bit better, I think, than, than I, just a, just cutting it. I'll tell you another thing about the three off three in the side pocket. Uh, you might break open the four eight. Exactly. Yeah. You might be able to come two rails to behind, the front. Behind the, the two. Exactly. Uh -huh. I sure hate to really see him shoot the three just because I, I kind of believe he'll figure it out shooting the two, if, especially if he can get at the five early. He needs to get at that five ball if he does shoot this two. He's got to open that pocket up for the four. Well, it looks like he's either straight or the cue ball's going into the long rail here. Long rail's okay. He uh, come it, forward with a little bit of left. Well, yeah. yeah, he's queuing low though. I think he's. I think he might just stop right there and cut the five. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's coming back. Okay, and that's what I would have been looking at before, but he. I don't think he can really afford to. Maybe he can get on the five to get on, but get on the four. The problem is if the four is covered up, if you got on the five correctly, you could reposition the uh, 13 to open that side pocket up, but you need another ball to shoot off of next to get position on the four. So by the way he's shooting here, it makes me think, makes me think that the four does go in the side. He's in the trees again a little bit. And what I mean by that, he's a little elevated over that 15. I'll tell you what else he could do. Huh. If he could stop right there, he could knock the five in and come one rail cross right into that four eight. I didn't even see that, and I'm not sure why, but he could just stop his ball kind of right there, hold his ball. I think that's available. Is he cutting this in the corner, Kenny? He was trying to break there, and he just didn't see that he could have held his ball up right there. He didn't see he could shoot the five and come across and bump the eight four. And really, with the ten the way it is up from the pocket, I think he probably would have come away with a shot. 
Do you think it would have benefited him to have taken a stroll around the table maybe before he made up his mind, just well, to maybe get a different perspective on, on what he needed to do? Well, I was doing a lot of looking, and I don't have any pressure on me, and it took me a while to see that. I, and he walked around the table quite a bit throughout the just couple balls he did make. So I think it just never hit him hit him in the head that, hey, I can knock this in and just come below the ball that was next to the five and, and come across and bump both those balls. Well, Don, I, isn't it occasionally where you, you sort of deceive yourself on what it looks like if you're Absolutely. standing in the wrong Absolutely. position? Absolutely. I, I talked to Danny about it, and Danny, uh, even the great players sometimes have to remind themselves how easy certain things are. You know, we can get it in the moment, nerves get going, everything starts looking tough. That's a big key. That's a big sentence that if you're a pool player, we don't have coaches and we don't have caddies that are at the table. You have to be able to remind yourself of little things. And sometimes it's a fundamental thing that you're struggling with. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with reminding yourself from time to time. A lot of people are saying, oh, I don't want to think about anything. Well, you have a disadvantage if you're not willing to use your brain. So whether even if it's uh, even if it's with issues of, of things you're struggling with. So is he going into this ball? Is this necessary? I don't think so. OK. Well, isn't it isn't it really, you know, true that you want to avoid going into balls unless you have to? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not sure he could avoid going into this, but I'm not I, I, I'm not sure he could avoid going into this one ball here. But oh boy. Well, this is going to be okay if he can get the position on the ten. Otherwise, you're gonna <laughs> he's gonna have to show off the stroke here. How's is this even possible to draw out without catching the one? Well, the good thing if is... If you were to catch the one coming out, Jeremy, wouldn't that help the cue, would it it could, help the cue ball it get could. down table? Well, I'll tell you what he needs to realize is I don't have to get down table. The middle of the diamond's good. Wow, what a stroke. That, that needs to slow down. Still, what a stroke, though. Oh, boy. Wow. Now, he'll slow roll kick this in. I mean, reason being is he'll make Dennis have to still come with one if he doesn't make it. And now he still has position on the side. Big shot for Jason Shaw right here in this match and the make it happen. Great shot. Great shot and with a one and two record, really the start he needed, huh, Kenny? No question about it. No question about it and you know, if he were to come out on top in this match, now we'll get these two guys at two and two. And depending on what happens at 930, tomorrow's going to be a fun day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I anticipate yeah. tomorrow being incredible. Either way, there's definitely going to be, I, I think, at least four going into tomorrow that still have a chance to get in the final without any uh, really determined. Now, Duel, he, he kind of controls his own fate tonight. Now right, with a three and zero record, a win tonight, yeah. and he's a lock for the final. Right, but without a win tonight, <laughs> nobody's a lock for the final. No. Right, that puts both of them at three and one, filler and duel. And these two guys are two and two, and the only person kind of out is Shane. He's well, one Darren, and three. And Darren, Darren, Darren. And Darren. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, have you do a little analysis here of the uh, of the break shot for us, and. Um, okay. Well, he broke dry, but uh, this match earlier, but really overall, last night he broke the balls incredibly. I don't see him break, breaking dry. I just don't, I, I just, it'd be hard for me to ever think he's going to break dry. All right, he's going to have two of each. Yeah, well. That, that's certainly anything but dry. Yeah, this is, this is what you call curtains right here on this rack. Yeah, two of each in an open table. How you looking? Yeah, and just uh, it appears at first that the solids are the play, but I really do kind of like the stripes. Does your brain sort of tell you that, Jeremy, kind of almost instantaneously when you, you look at a table that doesn't have a, a lot of problems on it? I mean, you, do, you, do you sort of zone in on the pattern kind of quickly, or does it still take... A little bit of time. To well, I think you can easily fool yourself sometimes. Uh, I'll tell you what I do. I, 
I like looking at both, obviously. I'm, I'm that type of player. And then I, if there's any question mark, I think usually a lot of times it's obvious, but if there's any question mark, I go with my gut. I mean, my gut tells me a lot in this sport, I'll tell you that. So, for example, after the break, and you have a choice still, table's open, and both groups have a little difficulty. I'm not saying clusters, but need some attention. Do you actually then kind of plan out the play for both groups to help you make your decision? Or does it come as soon as you see a way out? Yeah, I wouldn't say there's a mathematical equation other than cue ball movement, how much cue ball movement I have to deal with. Um, and also what easily gives me a chance to win, meaning there's not as much question mark. Like even if I'm looking at the solids and I feel like, all right, the solids, I have to bank this ball to get out, but I'm more guaranteed to get that bank and have a chance to win. You know, a reasonable bank, cross side, cross corner. You don't want to settle for long railers playing eight ball. But um, and, and then instead of maybe looking at a, uh, the same table with a set of stripes that have a couple of clusters I have to break, even though they're available, but something wrong might go, you know, something, something bad might happen in the mix of that. Well, a lot of times I like getting that guaranteed shot to win. Not saying I'm going to make it all the time. But uh, just like these guys, you'll see them settle for a bank quite often uh, or, or a certain combination or something quite often just so that they give themselves a chance to get put in position to win. And that's one thing that we have one player here that is 3-0. and and he has really exhibited that. That's Corey Duell. He's he's really been able to uh, look at the table and say, look, I got to settle for this. This is what I got to settle for, whether it's a kiss shot, meaning playing a ball off another ball or a bank shot or whatever it is. And that's one guy that's really made a lot of great decisions so far this week. I think Dennis made five balls. Yeah, he made three, three solids. solids. And if he uh, can get at that seven, I think he can. This is going to be a pretty routine rack. The only ball he's really got to th think about is the eight. And I think it m might pass it looks the 12. Like it, it looks like it passes the 12, I think. Yeah. At least off the cushion it would go in. And if not, he's got it in the side by where he's standing. Yeah, and when he shoots the four, he could certainly open that pocket as well, playing the four a little bit off the 12 if he wanted. In a game of eight ball, as opposed to maybe other games, are you ever trying to leave yourself more than one option on your position? Where, like in straight pool, we always try to play where, you know, if I don't get quite here, I know I've got this. Oh, I it's think more so more this, so this game ball. than any game. I think, you know, and, and snooker's a lot of that way. And, you know, there's certain games where you play on once, any game you play on one half of the table, then you go to the next half, that's, that's how it's going to be. But um, he could have done better here. I'm really surprised he just didn't put a little high right on that ball and come straight towards the three. And he wanted to get a little closer, it looked like. But What do you think he's going to do here? Try to just drag it over past the nine ball? Uh, it depends on the, what the eight does. If the eight goes by the 12 cleanly, he can go forward in between the eight and four, I think. Now, if the eight doesn't fall, he may go into those. Okay, he, nice shot. So that tells me right there that the eight definitely passes the 12. But yeah, it's a it's a definite choice game, and the guys that play it the best, meaning they put themselves in position for choices, are the ones that really excel at this game. And back home, I play a, a tournament every uh, every other week or whatnot on Thursdays for eight ball. We play, play a little tournament back at the home pool room, and and I get in discussions about eight ball with guys, and they say, well, it becomes less choices when you uh, you know the better players, the champions, they play more exact. Well, they're playing more exact to the choices. They're still playing choices. They're just more a little more exact on where they get to have options than other players. So anybody that plays eight ball without choices, I think has uh, got the worst of it. Well said, thank you for that. That's good advice. Well, Akistat's Video Productions would like to say a special thank you to two more of our first-time Make It Happen supporters, Bill Weldon, all the way out there on the West Coast in California. And, Bill, we hope you're watching right now. But if you're not, when you do finally see it, thank you for what you did to make it happen. And from right here in New Jersey, Jack Springfield, a first-time Make It Happen supporter. Jack, thank you so very much.
Dennis up, uh, excuse me, uh, Jason up six to two and now breaking. And just watch for that two and the 11. Those are the ones he's playing. The set ball's behind in the side. Now those both hit low. So that tells me that something didn't work out right. And that's the dry break. Both of them went about a good ball low. Mm -hmm. And now Dennis at the table and Dennis being two and one, two and one record. Uh, and day one, he defeated Dennis, uh, Shane Van Boning 10 to nine. And day two, he defeated Darren Appleton 10 to seven. And we're looking for another match here between, yeah, and uh, he opened the tournament losing uh, his first match actually in day one to Corey Duell at 10 to six. 10 to six has been the worst deficit we've seen as far as losses mm -hmm. here. And yeah. we kind of anticipated that all the players playing just, you know, all in dead stroke this time of the year, they're all playing great. And then the alternate break format, you kind of figure it's going to be all close matches. Well, I'm sure a bunch of these guys played in Darren's uh, eight ball event there last week as well, following the U.S. Open. So uh, they still have eight ball on the brain. Yeah, they better keep it on the brain. It's a game that had a little bit of lull uh, not too long ago, a few years ago, and, and for a little bit of time, maybe I would say eight or ten years overall, really, especially big table eight ball. Now, there's been a lot of bar table pool in America. We all know that. But I think it's a game that's uh, that's back pretty pretty uh, heavily in, in America, and it's going to be a lot more of it on the pro scene. Okay, not much trouble here. Both these guys, now he's got to watch that two ball. He's going to be leaning over. Not sure what he doesn't like about this. Will, will he be able to just pull this back between the eight and the nine and then shoot the five and the two and uh, have the one as the ball or before the eight? I think he wants to go ahead and get the four out of there. Oh, my goodness. Did it look like he jumped up a little? Uh, it maybe almost maybe a little, but he wasn't down on the ball like he normally is okay. because he was worried about fouling the two ball. Um, so that might have thrown his, uh, his balance off a little bit? Well, or his, just his concentration? Because he was thinking uh, about something else. Uh, I think he took it for granted a little <clears throat> bit. Is mainly what I saw, but 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 fundamentally he just wasn't down like he normally is. You know, chin on the cue and all that. But still, really not much of an excuse to miss that one. You say the chin on the cue, and I know exactly what you mean. There's a lot of players that play like that. I don't know how you can do that. I don't do it. I mean, but um, there's a lot of people that play that way. I've known a couple of players that have grown a goatee to avoid rubbing their skin off. Oh, wow. Yeah, how's, yeah. That, how's that for forward thinking? Well, I've, uh, I've gotten back to where I really tried to make myself get my chin back down on the cue a little more. That's, the, I think, the best position, you know. And get a little older, you get a little lazier, and there's really no excuse for it. Now, this, this little kiss right here. It's going to be okay because he, he, he's still got the 15, but he's got to get on the 9. And he doesn't want to have to shoot the 15, go to the 9 now, and then back over for the 14. He'd rather stay away from that. So does he just kill the ball here and take a, and get above the 14 a little bit, a little angle? I would think come off the rail 6, 8 inches, maybe just kill this with kind of a little bit of left, but it, look, yeah. uh, it doesn't look like that's what he's doing. Uh-oh. Uh oh, do you think, Jeremy, he was uh -oh. trying to nudge the 14 out there out in a little more space, which would give him an easier route to the nine? I don't think so. I, I think uh, it was just he missed hit the speed. And any time you come across the table, uh, you you take a chance of making a mistake when there's a ball there. Great stroke there, though. Wow. I thought that was going to go. Well, not where it hit. So well, you, it hit so a little bit up, but I, I still thought yeah. it might slide in. But you think on the prior shot, he was trying to just come straight across for the nine ball? Yeah, get an angle on the nine just to come back across for the 14. Okay. What we were talking about trying to stay away from doing. but And that all came from a, a, a bad double kiss on the seven when he played the 10 off the seven in the, in the lower right-hand corner. Well, it may be a shot or two away, and he may not even do it. But let's say he winds up getting to onto the five, where he's got to play it into the 14 and, and have the five fall in, okay? What's the um, prevailing, you know, approach? What's when you do factors, something yeah. like that to put forward spin on the ball you want to pocket, how do you hit the cue ball in a situation like that? 
Well, it's a definitely a gear system as far now. He's going to do it here because okay, he has same, a same thing. How's he? And he how's has he element hit the of safety. Well, well, to make he, the one go forward when it well, hits. Well, normally he would hit bottom. Here he's he's going to hit a lighter speed. A lighter speed. See what happens with a lighter speed is it makes the object ball actually have a roll on it rather than sliding, okay? So it actually allows it to turn over, and that's what you need. A lot of times, though, the way you can help that is with draw English. Now, right there, he didn't want to put draw because he was also playing a two-way shot. He was playing safe just in case the ball didn't go in. But normally, if you're trying to help it and nothing else matters besides trying to make that ball, uh, like let's say it's the eight ball and you just win with it if you make it. Uh, yeah, the draw English will put a little bit of top. Okay. Is but the key any... is don't let it go off in your hand. You need the spin to be on the ball. That way it's not sliding towards that second ball. So is there, a, is there like a general rule that says um, if you want the first ball you hit to have that forward roll, you cue low, and if you cued high, you'd get more of a slide effect on that first ball that you hit? Uh, high, high will hold it up a little more. It makes it more difficult. So speed it, it won't, the forward roll won't pick up as, as, as early. As easily. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, speed is really uh, the, creates the sliding effect. Just like a lot of times when people... Uh, generally, all right, people struggle drawing the ball for first off. What happens is, oh, I hit the cue ball. It didn't draw for me. Well, let me do something else. Let me hit it harder. Okay, so what that does is that actually keeps less revolutions on the ball. That makes for a lot of people because they tend to hit up on the cue ball a little bit when they add speed also. It makes the cue ball slide a little bit before it really starts to... Backspin. The backspin, yeah. And so you're really taking away... Like uh, just like when you're when you're wanting to put spin on the cue ball, you actually you should shoot at the speed to where you actually feel your cue stick putting the spin on the ball. When you add a lot of speed, that's when you get that slide factor, kind of like a knuckleball going at the object ball, and then you got problems. Okay, a couple of dry breaks to begin, but now uh, the last few he's made one on the break. We'll see what he can do here, trailing six to three. There's that ball on the side. Both of them. Yeah. All right, and the nine, so it's two stripes and a solid so far. It's two of each again, I think. Wow, Jen. And uh, again, uh, I, I think I look at the stripes. If the opening shot isn't too difficult, you'll notice the seven and the three a little bit uh, pinned on the back rail, on the side rail, on the back rail. Well, you know, if he were to shoot the eleven, Jeremy. Has he got problems with the traffic on the 6-3, or is it easy enough to just come around that? Well, he would hold for the 13 anyways oh, if he I was see. to shoot okay. the 11, but I think he's just going to spin chip the, the 14 in. Shouldn't That's kind of thin, isn't it? Yeah, it's okay. It's not that bad. Yeah, he's not going to let Whitey, like that not shot, let Whitey go? Well, I don't think so. I think he can actually put a right English and go around the 12 coming uh, two rails towards would, the 11. Would you give any consideration to the solid since the two's a pretty good opening shot? Yeah, but uh, at this level, I don't think that makes big a difference here. Now, if we had not as many options on the stripes like these, I mean, he really shouldn't miss that ball. You know, that's like 99 out okay, of 98 out of 100 for these guys. All right. Um, but o overall, you know, if, if I would definitely consider the solids if there was what I considered a little bit more than, uh, you know, a little less than highly missable, but a little, little, little more than, how, how am I trying to say yeah. that? Let me get that straight. But anyways, I think you understand what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, I do. Like if I really thought the 14 or the 11 was really missable, yeah, let me start with a duck, and I'm a firm believer in getting the run started. But, but, but I didn't see Dennis missing that ball. That's for sure. One interesting thing to me is we've seen the eight ball get kicked up on the break near the side pockets a lot. That's true, it ha and it's that particular side it seems like it goes to most of the time, and yeah. maybe that's because half the guys are right-handed, and or mo more, most of them are right-handed except for Jason and Joshua. <laughs> and it maybe it has nothing to do with that. It may have to do with where they're putting the cue ball to break. Right, and it just could be coincidence. With yeah. you know, three days of pool, we played a lot of matches, but to try and figure out why it's going over there would take uh, yeah. take maybe a computer program. But. More, more brain power than uh, is in the booth right now, I'm afraid. Hey, to say. hey, 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 hey. Take it easy. 
Ralph Rubin, if you're out there, you're from Florida, and you're a first-time Make It Happen supporter, and you are now in the Make It Happen family. And thank you, Ralph, for your support. And we hope you'll be with us for many, many more to come. And I also want to recognize from Connecticut, Nico Batiste. And thank you, Nico, for also being a Make It Happen supporter for the first time. We appreciate it. Now we'll look again at the 6 and 10. They'll be tracking straight out of the rack towards their their uh, relative side pockets, that being the 6 on the left side if you're looking at your monitor and the, and the 10 on the right side. Again, they're aimed low. The, the 10 six, went in, but the, the six, 6 was going. going. And it got yeah. kicked, oh, okay, it was going. Yeah, okay. it was going, but he made two stripes, I believe. He should be all right here unless the 11's really not playable. Now the 14's an issue and the 8's an issue, so he's, right. got, he's got work. Well, if we look at the monitor, we can see the uh, 11 is accessible from on the long rail. Okay. There, well, is, there is room, and it also comes, uh, doesn't it come the, the long way, too. He's going to look at using the 15 quickly here to get at, not, not uh, definitely get at the 14 now. Funny I'd thing is, the, you think he'd shoot the 11 first right now? I don't know if he can get at it. I, That's what he, I don't know if he can get at that ball. He's looking at the 8 now. Tell you, uh, one funny thing is, if he was to hit the four, that would probably open the 14 as well. It would go off the eight and maybe catch an edge of the 14. So we'll see if he just goes into 14 or if he goes into both. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to shoot the 11 now because it's all he's got. And rail first isn't great either because you'll, he'll still catch a piece of the six and straighten out the cue ball. Did he foul? He no, the... no, I don't think he fouled. Okay. I think he just, I think he just took a whack at it. it the one stroke that uh, looked like uh, it just came back and hit the six because he missed it so badly. But that's the first kind of one stroke shot I think I've seen from him in a couple days. Well, he's it's a little disgusted. Yeah. yeah, a lot of guys. Sometimes guys will figure. Mm -hmm. Do you think he played the right shot by going into the 14 there? Well, he was in a bad spot. You know, the one thing about going into the 14, I think he would uh, agree, is you got to go into it lighter. You, you can't let it get knocked away from the cue ball. In that instance, you really didn't have much for insurance. So anytime you're breaking balls out, especially when you're trying to get, gain position on the one you're breaking out, like that's the only one I have, well, then you really got to hit the ball a little lighter, I think. But I think he had to try and create, that's for sure. I didn't see any pocket for the 14 at all. But uh, some of the guys, you know, and not so much at this level, but occasionally at this level, especially if they get a little frustrated, the guys will say, well, my fate is determined on how the balls lay out right off the break. You know what I mean? Where, you know, you get the guys that played a lot of eight ball and they get in a little more work eth ethic behind them and uh, they don't mind working through some of those tough ones that look impossible to win uh, no matter what I do. Dennis just missed. Yeah, and he might have missed. Uh, he gave up a 14 ball shot. but Yeah, I, I can't tell if Jason's uh, jacked up here, but there's, there's, there's a good distance between those two balls, and he's tall. I don't think this will be too big of a problem. Well, it's getting the cue ball out. Right. Is he going to run into the one? He's trying to go around these. Watch this shot. He's going to pull the ball short of the low of the two and then come around. He's going to need a friendly bump, and I'm not sure he's going to get it. Now... He's just going to kick at this 11. Is he going to kick to make or just no, so? No, I him? think it's two-way. Oh, he wow. hit that awful. He's supposed to hit that a lot better than he did. He, he Again, it, I know he's fast, but, I mean, that, that, that was two strokes instead of one because he, he had a great dead nut safe. I think he didn't put all his focus on either making the ball or playing safe. Doesn't that happen a lot where you're... You split your focus and you mess up both both possibilities. Oh, absolutely. And Dennis has got a free roll at this six ball with uh, the not dead free. I mean, these guys can make shots from anywhere, but there's it's hard to sell out, is what I'm saying. The way the nine, he's got a lot of protection. Well, from six one, it could be six five here in a few seconds, and. We'll have to see how Jason reacts to that. I think we've already seen a little bit of frustration here in the last couple of racks. Absolutely.
distance was having a look at the three, and it does pass uh, pretty easily, I believe. It'll just come one rail out for the either the three or the five. I'm not sure which. I guess I the think five. The yeah. But he's got uh, a green. Actually, the I, mean, like, I like the five to get me to the eight, don't you? Yeah, but the way he was, uh, he didn't want to shoot the three to part of a pocket from a little distance. So now he's got, he's got an angle to where he can drop over on the three and then get, he needs to get below the four. That's huge. He doesn't want to be above the four in this instance um, because then he'll have to contend with the 11 and the nine with the cue ball. So here he wants to roll below just as so. Now he can just pull the cue ball up the rail with a little low left English. Is it, then that's the preferred path rather than coming across? Well, the reason is you don't you don't have to like pound or create in that instance, and then worry about your speed coming it helps across you with your feel for the speed of the shot by, yeah, by that, playing it the way he did. Yeah, yeah, he's keeping it real simple. He's coming in at a nice, nice angle, and I like coming across whenever you have more of a natural angle, okay? Because then you can cue the ball with just a high left ball. You never have a miscue. You never have no problems like that, and your touches. Your touch is great, but when you have to pound the ball to create an angle, well, now now that's when you sacrifice speed and touch. You could overrun, you could underrun. I've pounded that kind of shot and scratched across the corner, overran the ball two feet, you know, and we're playing on a pretty slick table, so. Well, we got a ball game again. Oh, absolutely. And actually, all the, all the momentum's now on Dennis's side. I mean, he's got to be feeling pretty good from from six one, uh, with a with with uh, at least two dry breaks and maybe three. I don't remember if there were three, but we know oh, at least two. Was two, was yeah. two yeah. right yeah. away, and that's what got him in the hole. The one thing about momentum with the format we're playing this alternate to break. Dennis could do what he needs to do, break and run out here. And then if Jason breaks the balls well, he can break the momentum, uh, maybe by getting a, a, a somewhat of a routine out or or even more so making a great out. That you can really change the momentum right there without Dennis really having much to do with it. I really like the alternate break format for the most part. I think it adds a a degree of added fairness to our sport because our sport is so unique. It's the only sport where you can compete and actually never get a chance. Yeah, they play make it, take it for a long time. Yeah. So, Well, the one, there's a few factors. I like close matches, which, again, if both players, and you're talking about the best players in the world, generally, if, you're, are, are, if they're in form, you're going to see a lot of close matches. Another thing I, I like about it, it, I think it's a little... Uh, more true format, meaning it exposes the mistakes a little more. Uh, you can't make up for your mistakes like you can winter break. Uh, I've played winter break matches to where, you know, if we did, we were fortunate enough to have an Accustat on it uh, for that match that I actually shot higher than my opponent. And uh, just not getting a shot off the break. You know, sometimes it's not even making balls. It's just not getting a clear shot off the break. And we're talking about rotation pool a lot of times. Definitely not eight ball, but... But like I said, I think it really exposes that it's a little more true to what really happened in that match. You're going to see a little bit uh, better well, results as far as that's concerned. Well, he's got a solid. He's got the solids. He made the four ball, and actually, that's probably does him a little good right now because there's not a there wouldn't be a good stripe to shoot if he made a stripe. Right. But for trouble, what do you see as problems? Well, the six and the two, the three. The three is over there stuck on the rail just above the side pocket, but you'll see that side of the table is pretty clear. So gaining position on that is not as much of an issue. The six is the one that's the issue. And he may have to uh, he may have to thread the needle, getting on a little bit the right side of uh, the two ball to where he can draw the cue ball over into like the nine, opening up the six for that left side pocket or that left uh, lower corner pocket. And that, that's a little bit down the road. Um, Is there any way he could use the three playing it in the corner he's standing? And come and across? Come, no, come around behind the eight, nine for the six. 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're talking about taking a what, like three what, rails. You what know? possibly could be a tough shot, though. I'm making it a little tougher because you're going to have to apply a little inside English. Um, I'll tell you one. He could use the three a couple ways. He could use the three and come across and bump the six as well into position. Okay. He's knocking the one in, I think. I agree with that. I wouldn't go around the five, though. No reason to do that. You just come right up in between. I wasn't. Uh, this is okay if you're if you're planning to pick the three off, which. Well, now would be the time, wouldn't it? Well, now might be the time to shoot to, your shot. Yeah, to go to go behind the eight nine. Yeah. It looks like he's got a pretty good angle to do that. And he's close to yeah, it. Yeah, he can make a good hit on this. Now, if he's well, uh, he's he's queuing low, so yeah, we he's know not he's worried. not going to do that. There's something that he's not worried about. Okay, you'll see again a little bit of body movement. I think he's looking at what I was talking about, shooting the seven, then coming up the, the right side of the table, just falling a little short of the 10 to where he has the angle to shoot the two and draw over in between the nine and 15. I think that's what he's planning. That ball bounced quite a bit on him, so you're going to see him. He's going to have to float this way in, but that's okay. Sometimes you got to float the ball, and the felt's plenty fast enough to get the object ball there and still contain the cue ball. So are you suggesting just uh, a high ball here and straight down or, yeah. two ra or two rails? You could go two rails, and you're sacrificing probably a little distance. I don't mind the straight down, though, not at all. It's kind of what you, you prefer. But he's on the perfect angle to where he can hold his ball pretty well. But he can't afford to run into the six or the fifteen now, right? He's got to draw in between them and kind yeah. of hit the nine. And yeah, the nine is okay. He can bump the nine a little bit. The problem with bumping the nine is don't bump block it into the blocking the eight because you could fall a little bit behind the six or you could fall on the rail where you can't come back. I think he can do everything without bumping anything, is what I think, like that. He got so good on the two ball that you know, just perfect little, little, ball. you know, three-quarter angle, maybe something like that, 80% angle on the ball, like where he's catching 80% of it. He's going to let his stroke out here, I think, drawing all the way out. One reel out, like so. And notice again, as we mentioned, all those solid, all those stripes, all seven of them were in the same place they were after the break. Oh, absolutely. He never yeah. touched one of them, and he navigated a pretty tricky out. Absolutely, he did. And uh, we had talked about it last night, and Darren and I had talked about it after the match that uh, Danny and I were talking about during the match that we almost were like seeing uh, Dennis's eight ball game evolve as the as the match went along. He made some just incredible outs and, and what I think were textbook incredible. I mean, like you had to do it and it was the right way to do it as well. Like three or four games there that were that really kind of put it away uh, to win the match against Darren last night. OK, uh, Jeremy, we've got the rack track up here for our viewers. And yeah. You can see after the first two games, a uh, four pack for Jason, those in the first two were the dry breaks for Dennis, and then yeah. a five in a row here for Dennis. Yeah, Shaw went in six out of seven to, to open this match, and now five in a row for Dennis. Watch out for the cue ball. Oh, boy. Well, there ain't gonna okay. be it looks any... like he made one of each, I think. That's gonna, that's gonna be huge. Uh, Still not great, and we're not, and we're playing the rules where he can't shoot like a, a solid into a stripe. He right. has to play solid, solid, solid stripe, solid, or stripe, stripe. Right. If he wants to shoot to 14 somehow, he'll have to hit a stripe first. I think I look at the solids here. Just maybe not. Maybe the 12 is playable. Yeah, it it must be. Yeah, the 12 must or, be playable. Or it was his best shot. Yeah, he could have knocked the four on the side, though. And the right. reason why I said that, the five was positioned in a nice place to break the seven a minute ago. But Would you be thinking, Jeremy, now about saving the 12-9 uh, for your last two? Wow. Well, or is the seven going to be a problem, maybe interfering with position for the nine if once you make the 12? I think I would rather get on the nine first. And use the 12 as the... 
key ball be 48? Yeah, we'll see here. The 12 must go, though. Yeah, I think I like getting on the 9 first, though, if possible. Really might have wanted picking off that 11 as well, but we'll see. He can reach. He can reach over, I think, and reach the 12 ball shot. But I still think this is. A, he's going to go ahead and go and get the 11. That's mm -hmm. what I like. That's what I like as well. You'll notice it's going to be tough for him to get the cue ball out after making the 12. So he wants to just bump the seven and take a little cut, probably on the uh, eight in the side. So how is he going to cue the ball here? Oh, he's drawing this back for position. Uh, I, th I don't think there's no bump for the side here. I think he's drawn back for, he's got to watch out for getting behind the five. Oh, wow, great shot. He didn't even touch the seven. I know it's not the best position, but to get the cue ball clear that easily, I, I like it. I like the way he hit that ball. He's got the six and the one covering up. To, oh, he overcut it. Wow. And is he going to leave anything? A three in the side? And no, the one's got that covered. He's got the six in the side. Well, then he's got a tough shot, well, is all I can all, say. Well, that's all he's got, though, isn't it? Well, yeah. Offensively, anyways. Oh, he's in a he's in a tough spot here, folks. He's gonna have to let the cue ball go. I don't really think he's gonna cue down and throw this ball in. I think he's gonna level out, make a natural hit on the six. Watch out that for the seven. That, huh? that corner pocket the, scares me. The seven. He could go yeah. right through the seven That's and right. scratch. I, I told you that corner, oh, wow. corner pocket scared me right there. And now he's got to come with another one. I'd bank the seven. I might, too, just thinking if I miss, it's going to cover the pocket up. But don't be fooled by that. We just talked about shooting the eight in behind another ball. Yeah. But he's got a toughie here. I mean, it, you know, just practicing, you get down on this five ball, and it's still a little tough. But under the pressure, 6-6. Dennis, six, is, six. You know, Dennis is a great banker. He's, he's an underrated bank pool player. But... Um, this is probably 95% make a bet or better, I would guess. Who's got uh, Who's got Dennis underrated banking? In? Who's that, like Brumbach or somebody like that? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to figure that one out. Who's got Dennis? I well, think just because he only plays it once a year. Right. You know. Yeah, well, he doesn't miss many banks playing no. nine ball or one pocket right. either, so. And now to win six in a row and take the lead, he's got three solids and then a what would be an easy eight ball if he can get through these. Long and straight here, though. Just a stop shot, isn't it? Uh, he wants to pull it back a couple inches, I think. Yeah. That's one thing he does so well. So solid, such great fundamentals, even from long distance, to keep the cue ball on such a nice line. Meaning it never really wavered to the left or to the right. It was just straight back how he wanted it. And great shooting. Now on that, on that last shot, the shot before the eight, where he made the seven, drew it back two inches from six and a half, seven feet away. Is that where, and we talked about this yesterday, where you would elongate your bridge bridge a little bit to have a little bit more, or wasn't that called for on that shot? Yeah, besides, you know, not having room or being on the rail, um, I don't consciously change my bridge length. I kind of naturally go to it. Uh, I was talking about yesterday, though, if you're playing, if you're a pool player that lacks a little power, but doesn't lack aiming that, you know, as far as hitting the cue ball, you hit the cue ball very accurately. Well, you may lengthen, lengthen the bridge to try and lengthen the stroke a little bit to gain a little power, and, and quite opposite, whenever you're a player, they can draw his ball, but he has a few occasional mishits. Well, that's when you shorten the bridge up just to get a little bit closer to the cue ball to hit it a little more accurately. It's not too much varying from shot to shot to try and help you draw the ball at that time if you're not used to it. You know what I mean? If you just can't all of a sudden say, oh, let me lengthen the bridge right here. Okay. It's going to be a very natural thing overall. Sort of almost subconscious? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's different fundamentals. There's a lot of unique things about our sport, different ways to get it done. 
Up, oh, up. Oh, that's the that's the hit on the on the rack that he had a lot of problems with yesterday. Both losing the cue ball to that side and the other. How's he looking? He's looking Made three solids. He and better have a shot on that four. <laughs> well, it'll it'll pass the fourteen. Well, then he's the good. Well, the five's the tough ball. Right? Yeah, but with the one the and six, six being, right there, yeah, yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. It's a matter. Does the eight pass the twelve? It doesn't. Yeah, but it comes. It in the comes other on the lower right though. So. And, and and in the other side. Considering making three solids and burying the cue ball on that right side rail, he's come out pretty well. Uh, he could very easily not have a shot at all. And we got a nice close up of it right here. Is he here. looking at the five off the nine on the side? That doesn't go. No. I mean, it does go like, you no. know, yeah, but theoretically, but you're going to catch the point at a high percentage off the nine. Right, because the five's too close to the rail. Yeah, and the nine, if it was up just a half inch, you know, you just hard to squeeze a ball in there, and you really want to be able to squeeze a ball in between that kind of shot, you know, if you're trying to gauge it. He's going to have to shoot the four and draw his ball out, I think. Unless he's drawn right into the five, but it looks like he's got a low angle where he's drawn to the low part of the five where he can draw to the rail and back out. I would try to get on the one, and then you play the six on the side. And, and shoot the five up in the corner, exactly. right? Exactly. And even if it got a little funky, you could maybe play the six. Uh, oh, he miscued. Yeah. He miscued. Not going to be happy about that. Oh. He wasted a great break. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, you, no one's going to predict they're going to miscue, but they always happen at the most inopportune time. You never miscue with a nine-game lead, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I'll tell you what, also the miscue is not just from doubt of like, oh, my stroke, or oh, I miscued a little while ago, but just doubt, period, can, can throw the stroke off enough not only to miss hit the cue ball, but obviously here's uh, a total miscue. Uh, and watch out on the speed here. He's okay, though. You know, and a lot of things we talk about in the booth here as far as uh, making decision-making between the players from one, one thing to another, there's a lot of ways to get it done. We're just talking about the percentages in a long period of time of playing eight ball, like your whole life of playing eight ball kind of deal. You know, Danny alludes to, well, if you do this 100 times, and it does make a difference. Uh, but here in this setting, these guys can get it done a lot of different ways. But we're trying to inform not only the player, the other pool players out there watching and all the fans. But, you know, if we were to say this to, to, to not only the players, those little small things do show up, uh, you know, once you play 10 or 20 years of pool, so. The score is now 10, seven games each. What's your, what's your view on shooting with an open bridge versus a closed bridge? Is that more just what feels comfortable, what you learned with, or do you feel there's an advantage or disadvantage one way or the other? Well, I think the uh, when the pressure's on, I really like the closed bridge. Uh, it gives you a lot more trust. And uh, But I think the open bridge is played a lot more today because of the equipment. Yeah. Uh, the equipment allows to where you don't have to hit the ball as hard. So, like, uh, you don't have to hit the ball as hard to draw it. So a lot of times the closed bridge had to do with power. When I started playing, played on rubber back the, felts. The slow, nappy cloth. Exactly. Yeah. You had to create a lot of power. Uh, you not only had to spin the ball, you had to hit the ball with more speed to get it going and then the spin help it. Where now, it's a little bit more of a, a clean hit on the cue ball to get it going. And then because you have the big rollout factor with Simona's cloth, the rollout uh, really helps you if you get it going on the right path. So, so I don't mind the open bridge as much. Uh, my younger brother used to yell at me a, a few times here and there. He watched me play gamble or turn. He's like, man, using that open bridge way too much, way too much. You better get back to that closed bridge. You're missing because that open bridge, uh, yeah. you know, which I agreed with him a lot of times. Right. And I still feel like I'm playing my best with the closed bridge. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but still, at the same time, these days, things change. Yeah. The equipment makes things change. Uh, In all sports. Yeah. Right. But you being a tall man as well, um, what, I'm, what I'm getting to is an open bridge when you're down low over the ball, does it aid in your sighting of where you want to hit the cue ball and your line to the object ball? Or is it really irrelevant as far as which bridge you use on how you sight the ball? Yeah, I really aim with my stance. Uh, I check my work going up and down. Okay. Uh, I'm a firm believer that you aim with your feet. Yep. Um, if you become one of those players that adjusts while you're down on the ball, well, there's a few things. Uh, you'll adjust the rest of your life playing, which is no fun that way. There's no fun to play pool like that to adjust all the time. Uh, and then you really don't develop uh, any gut instinct, uh, any trust in your stroke and what you're doing. And you'll start to realize these guys pocket the ball so well. It's not that they're looking at something different. It's the stroke and the stroke that moves the ball in. And, um, and a lot of people, once you realize that, you realize the aiming is really kind of secondary. Um, you kind of do, you get down on the ball, you look cue ball, object ball, cue ball, object ball to make sure everything looks right and makes you comfortable to make the swing. Mm -hmm. oh, All right, boy. Well, oh boy, oh not, boy. Why did he right. go with right English yeah. there? Why didn't he just go with straight or left and come up the, does he have a piece of this? I think yeah, he's got he a little can, piece of it. he can cut it. it to our right. Oh, that was a little bit. Uh, Fortunate. That Fortunate see it. and confusing to me. I might yeah. have to ask Jason about that, that one afterwards, something he didn't yeah. like. And that one he splits the wicket with. And so I'll tell you, you, go ahead. Well, I just want to continue on on what you just said with the stance and everything. Do you, do you advocate, um, I guess the way I want to put it is, stepping into the shot? Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And that's what, what you meant by uh, I line up with my body. Right. And then do you have um, any kind of a benchmark, like I want my back foot under my right elbow or, you know, anything like that um, as far as a checkpoint? Or do you, you reach a point where you just know it feels right? Well, one thing I firmly believe in is, uh, like, not much. You want something you re can repeat. So what you need to do is, if you're right-handed like I am, I th in my opinion, I think you need to get to where you view the side of the shot without the right foot ever moving anymore, meaning get the right foot where it's going to be planted for your shot, and then you get that. You have the side along with it, and then... You're going to be real consistent that way if the right foot never changes, and then you make that left foot step towards your towards your target. You want everything going towards your target, just like throwing the ball. You're not going to be throwing off your back foot. You know, you want everything leaning that way. You know, and with balance, of course. But uh, you know, and as far as that adjusting, and we'll leave that alone. Uh, another thing about that adjusting when you're down on the ball, you never get any feedback. And, you know, if you don't adjust when you're down on the ball and you keep overcutting it, well, you know now. I'm lining up on it wrong. I'm sighting it wrong for one reason or another. But if you're one of those people that adjust all the time when you're down, you keep missing, well, how, how can you really, t what you can't I, tell yourself how much you adjusted. You know what I mean? There's, it's too fine of a line. So we'll get back to this great match now, though, with uh, Jason Shaw leading eight to, eight to seven in a match uh, that all of us know he must win to contend in, in the finals of this tournament. Oh, that's a... Uh, he got a little break. Yeah, really. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, he caught that 10 thick. He hit it to the left side of the pocket. That's why he caught well, the 14. Yeah. Well, that's, I think, probably because he was stretched out so far. But uh, what do you think here? He's got to shoot the 9? Yeah, he's okay. Yeah. The 14, uh, unfortunately, no, he's fine. He can shoot the 9. What I would be thinking about is when am I going to get at that 14? These other ones are very doable, and the 8's down there with it. I'm wondering when can I get at that 14 uh, and get that over with. I'd almost think about next. That's what I mean. Yeah, I, right. think, I think you're possibly Be right because there. Because you got the 12 and the 13 after the after the 14, correct? Yeah, and he may go ahead and elect to fall on the 13 now. Mm -hmm. That way he doesn't have to move the cue ball quite as much, and then he'll have the 11 next after the 13. Okay. Doesn't want to be above it too much, or, though. Or jacked up. And he may almost got both. Yeah. Well, now he's got to shoot the 13 just because of access to the cue ball, right? 
Yeah, and really that was the shot he was playing for anyways. Right. But the right. thing is now he's going into the five with the cue ball, and that's not a problem for the 11, but he's got to be able to get the cue ball out for the 12. Well, couldn't, he couldn't if he gets the cue ball off the rail and off the five, he could shoot the 12 in the side and kind of just stop or you know pull it back two, three inches, right? You mean to get on the to 11? To get from the 12 to the 11. Yeah, right here, though, looking down the barrel of this shot like I am, uh, I'm not so sure. He's not going to hit can the 5 thin enough? Yeah, he can go forward, but he might catch a double kiss on the 5 and send the cue ball into nice position anyway. So we'll see. And he doesn't want to get over the 6, Kenny. That's the, that's yeah. the problem with going forward. Is if you put a little too much on it, now he's gotten over the 5 again. So really, uh, one, of, one of Dennis's strengths has really eluded him a little bit this match at times, and that is cue ball control, meaning being a, li being a little bit more precise uh, at times when he needs to. Oh, he, uh, can he go for this? Can he really shoot at that? Uh, he may have to cut the 12. Well, if he shoots the 11, I don't know how he can do anything but jack up and try to stop. Yeah, and then you're taking a thin cut on the side. I don't right. think it goes by the four in the upper corner. And That's close. And if he cuts this in the side, then the cue ball's running into possibly trouble. Yeah. Well, he's going to think a little bit longer. Yeah, and I'll tell you another thing. Uh, okay, he's going to pound this and try. Well, no, he's trying to j draw his ball back for the 12 in the upper left or the side. So. Wow, what a shot. Gee. What a shot. Well, I know it's he was not only... all cookies yet, but that was one hell of a stroke. Sure was. I, and, and you'll notice as hard as he hit that, he still only got about 18 inches of cue ball movement. So that tells you how straight in he was on that ball. Pure is pure. Big shot here on the 12 to essentially tie this match at eight. Now, this has turned in to be quite the match. There's been all kinds of drama one way or the other. There's been great play, dry breaks, un unforced errors, unexpected misses. And here we are at 8-8 eight, eight with two of the best on the planet. Yeah, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's 8-8 eight, eight like Kenny Schumann had, had just alluded to. But uh, uh, at 9.30, we have Corey Duell and Joshua Filler. But let's get the schedule for Tuesday. We can't give you the 9.30 match tomorrow yet for 9.30 uh, for the finals. But at noon, we have Shaw taking on Van Boning. 2.30 is Filler and Okuyo. Then at 7 o'clock will be Duel and Appleton. So we'll just get to see uh, how this unfolds. This match here has a, a lot to do with uh, with how many players will be involved uh, trying to get to that final. We have two mathematically eliminated from the final. Did he make one? No. Wow. What a time to dry break. And he's almost got to play for the stripes, but I still don't think it's easy. Does a 15 pass the three? We're going to try and get a look at that. It's close. What, what would make you not want to look at solids? Just the opening shot? What about the 6-7 on the right side rail with the 10 and all that? Well, I was wondering if one of them would, would squeeze, would off, squeeze the in or, or yeah, the, or the, off, off, the, off the stripe. Yeah. If the 6 squeezes in now, if, if he can get that one in, uh, the 7 will go after, after that. Now, if he could shoot the 4 in and get on that 6 right now, I, I definitely like stripes. I think the five is assuming the five passes. I don't think the five passes, but that's not as much of an issue as a, as the fifteen because he can break with yeah. the three. He can I break with the five yeah. with the two. I think the six goes here one way or the other. It may go. It may go clean. Well, I would have liked to have gotten a little angle. Only reason being is because you want to roll this ball in. You don't want to shoot this ball with a lot of speed and have it bow on you. If he could roll it in and still have the two left uh, now, I don't know if he can do that. I don't know if he can afford to roll the ball and get behind the seven a little bit, maybe. Okay, this is what I was worried about it standing up if he has to draw the ball back out. If he's only sh having to shoot it into the rail. See, wow. having to draw the ball back out makes a big difference. Uh, not only on you may accidentally put a little bit of left and throw the ball a little more, a little bit of right and throw the ball a little more, you're really closing the pocket up a little bit. He 
He's going to well, have to get at that 15 pretty quick here, Kenny. Yeah. He sh and if he could have gotten out a little bit more right there, that would have been the time. But now, well, now he doesn't have the angle. Well, there's only... No, I don't know. I know he can't. Uh, he can't play the 12 in the side and come at it. No, he could play the 12 in the side though and get on the 13 uh, to break it and then to break it, it and, it, and don't get me wrong. It still may go by that three ball. I'm not 100% if it does or not. Let's. Uh, I think he's going to shoot the nine and try to go into it into the five. Okay, well, he, if he's coming to the back, he needs to do it with a little more speed. He needs the cue ball to escape the back of those right. balls. I don't want to just plant there, oh, and that's what I would be worried about. I think he so actually got, the 12? got it. Can you shoot the 12? I think so. Well, the 15's still in jail a little bit. No, well, it, it goes, goes, by, goes the by the two. two. Yeah, it, it goes, goes by, by the, the two. two. Okay. And then the 13 will get him there. Yeah. He so was trying this to... is pretty much, this is game ball, wouldn't you think, here? Well. Make uh, it and stop. Yeah, I would have to say I like his, I think he'll run out if he makes it. He certainly doesn't have to. He's lost the cue ball a couple times tonight, not too much. That's that's what I like watching him do. That gets me in the stroke, I'll tell you that. Just never seems to overhit the ball from long distance. It keeps reminding me that uh, accuracy is the key. And he still lets his stroke out, too, at the same time. So it's a, it's a funny combination. He needs that one to slow down, though. Perfect. Yeah, he doesn't want to get too thin on that 15, though. You'll notice, I'm not sure the 8 goes by the 2 as well. So he wants to get pretty full on this 15. And I believe he can because he's got a good foot, foot and a half, that he can go forward without, right. without uh, you know, uh, reducing his angle. Yeah, I think the 8 goes by the 7. It does not go by the 3. That ball hopped a little bit on him. Yeah. It slowed the cue ball down just ever so slightly. I wouldn't be surprised if he played the 8 in the side. Eight side or the or by the seven, either one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either there's one. plenty of room. Now don't graze this two ball. I'm not saying it makes a big difference, but it could come back out on you. You don't figure it to, but as Kenny talked about earlier, these guys try not to move anything as they run out. From here, I like the side. Oh, great shooting. Right. On the hill, eagle eye. And Dennis would have been breaking for the match had he not dogged that six ball. Not that it was a gimme. No, it was no gimme. I mean, was, but as you said, actually, the shape on the six maybe is what resulted in that outcome. Yeah, well, you know, Dennis is used to hitting the ball how he wants to every time. I, the reason why I said I would like to go forward because it gives you a hair of a room for error and not so much as a miss hit, but just a little opens the pocket up a little bit, you know? And so he got straight on it to where he couldn't go forward because he would end up getting behind the seven, directly behind the seven. So it was a little bit of a mistake, not, not following a little bit off angle on the six. So you could roll forward and just take a long distance shot on this ball that was hanging down here. I think it was the two, but now, yeah, Jason's got to feel good that he'll at least get well, to break gonna, the ball. He's coming back to the table one way or another, whether it's this game or next. Oh, my goodness. Wow, and he's just pouring them in on the break. Dropping. Yeah. They're still dropping. He's I made think he's got stripes. I think he made two stripes and a solid. Yeah, but open, and it's behind the line after the break. Yeah, but, I mean, look at the 15 for a starter if you wanted that. But the solids, I mean, are just sitting there like ducks. No, the solids are definitely the shot. Right. Yeah, without a doubt, even though you got to run, you know, one more of them. But a lot of times right. that bodes well for, for you, you know, if you right. don't mind having to shoot one extra inning or one extra uh, shot. Yeah. Would you leave the three ball for the key ball here? Uh, to get on the eight, you mean? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. Get on the seven now. Get on the seven now. He needs that to go. No, wow. he's, he's going to take the three now, I guess. I oh, guess he's just going to draw up the table off the four is what he's going to do. And that's correct, actually. Cause, yeah, just slide yeah, it down. That, yeah, that's correct. I think that's correct. Again, uh, you can sit there, and all you have to do when you're thinking about that, oh, well, during my pattern, is this ball going to do anything for me later on? If it's really not doing anything extra for you, just go ahead and take it out while you're at it. 
And Jason Shaw just two balls away from really winning another match that was desperately needed to stay in, 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 the, in the running for the finals here. Yeah, he's bunched up the field now. Good job, Jason Shaw. Yeah, he's Jason. two and two. Dennis is two and two. Uh, the next match is going to be Corey, who's three and zero, oh, versus Joshua, who it's is two, two and one. one. Right. So, after that match, if Corey we still loses, have four guys. you're going to have. If Corey loses, you'll have two at three and one, and two at two and two. If Corey wins, he's in the playoff, and then you'll have three guys at two and two. Absolutely, and it's it's really uh, besides losing a couple guys as far as the playoff is considered. Uh, it's really getting drama filled here, and uh, we appreciate y'all for joining us. I'm Jeremy Jones, joined by Kenny Schulman. This is the 2017 Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. We're with AccuStats Video Productions. Stay tuned. We have Duo and Filler coming up at 930. Thank you very much.